Thank you. Great. Okay, so I'll be talking to you about dark matter radio, um, DM radio for short, and it's a suite of experiments um, that is going to search for sub-micro EV axions. So first, who are we? Um, so these are the great people and institutions and funding agencies involved in this project currently. Um, and if you notice, look closely, this is made up of, I guess, what used to be two different teams. Um, so there's the Abracadabra team and the, DM the, the team that did DM Radio Pathfinder. And these people came together to become you know, the, the future of DM Radio. And this is a great combination of people because Abracadabra brings in experience using uh, magnets and doing axion searches, and then DM Radio Pathfinder brings in experience using uh, resonant circuit. So together will be a resonant axion search. So now that you know who we are, um, I'll tell you about the axion parameter space and current experiments, like what's going on in this world. I guess you, might, many of you know and you've been hearing about it, but I'll, I'll review um, what's going on. I'll tell you in more detail what the DM radio pro program is planning to do. Um, and then I'll go into more detail about DM radio cubic meter, which is what this talk is about, and that's one of the experiments in this suite of experiments. Um, and I'll tell you about the science goals and the detect some details of the detector design. So first, axion parameter space. Here is on the y-axis the coupling to uh, photons and then the, the mass range uh, of, it, like of, the, of the axion. Okay, so there are some um, existing bounds that uh, carve out this space. Um, some experiments did a great job of uh, probing these axions. Um, and the QCD axion lives on this uh, yellow line with two popular models called KS KSVZ and DFSC. Um, and if you notice, the, the, the axion parameter space covers about 10 orders of magnitude of range uh, in mass, and then the DM radio plan is to cover about 10 to the 6 um, or uh, six orders of magnitude um, in the lower mass region of this, of this area. Okay, so what do we think about low mass axions? Um, because for a while, people didn't really think about low mass axions very much. So in 2018, there were these two, paper, two papers that came out um, by brilliant theorists, including Peter Graham and Alan Guth. So these two papers came out within a week of each other, independent papers, so we know it's good science. Um, and the results are approximately in this plot, which is kind of complicated, but the point is, okay, so this is the energy scale of inflation and the mass of the axion on the y-axis. So really, I mean, what I mostly care about is the, the mass on the y-axis. So if we consider axions that were produced after inflation, then they are pretty much confined into this little triangle. Um, and so there's a bound of like one micro EV they can't be, if they're less than one micro EV, um, then they would overproduce and that wouldn't work. So this is the ac classical axion window where uh, cavity experiments do a great job searching. Then uh, if you instead consider axions that were produced before inflation, um, you live over here and all of this space opens up and is available. So really the point is, uh, oh, and the space, if you notice, corresponds to, uh, corresponds to lighter, lighter axions, and that's exactly the axions that we're going to be searching for. Um, so the point, right, is QCD axions uh, generated before inflation can be naturally produced in, in the observed abundance um, of dark matter over a large mass range. Um, yeah. Great. So we're going to be searching there. Now, what is the status, uh, what's going on uh, in, the, in the Axion world? Uh, disclaimer, this is not a plot made by me. You've seen this plot in a few of the other talks. This plot was made by the community for the US SNOMAS process, um, which is the process that uh, helps the, the United States, I guess, prioritize funding in particle physics. 
Um, so here, there's bounds on the lower side of the mass range, on the upper side of the mass range, but there's a lot um, available. And if, again, existing haloscopes have done a great job probing the QCD axion uh, mass range uh, over here. And currently, um, there's this thing called, okay, the DOE Dark Matter New Initiatives. Um, and as part of this uh, DMNI program, there are two experiments that include DAM radiometer cubed and ADMX uh, experiments um, that are going, that are currently undergoing uh, design studies. So like the, and the, design, the designs for these experiments as part of this pro program will be completed in 2023. So again, meter cubed is one of these experiments and that's when the design will be completed. Um, so this is an exciting, I guess, space to be carving out in the next few years. And then, uh, of course, there are many future projects that you've been hearing about that you will continue hearing about in this conference that cover uh, a great amount more of the parameter space. And these experiments vary in uh, readiness, I guess, from concepts to uh, operating experiments. So more specifically about the DAM radio program, um, these are the three, I guess, experiments that are the future of DAM radio that we, we talk about. Um, so there's DAM radio 50 liter. Maybe you've seen the poster that we have um, about it. Uh, so this, this is meant to search from 5 kilohertz to 5 megahertz, and this is not going to probe the QCD axion, but it, it, the goal is to have like a platform to test quantum sensors that will enable future searches to probe QCD axions in that mass range. Um, then DM radio meter cubed, which is the point, uh, the, the experiment that I'll be focusing on in this talk, is, uh, is over here. So the primary goal of DM radio meter cubed is to search for DFSC axions from 30 megahertz to 200 megahertz. Uh, and the secondary goals are to search, uh, to be okay, KSVZ sensitive down to 10 megahertz, and then QCD axion sensitive down to five megahertz. And again, this is part of the DOE uh, Dark, Matter New Dark Matter New Initiatives program. Um, and then, way further in the future, that will require larger collaboration, and it requires pushing the boundaries um, or uh, of available, or pushing the boundaries of technologies um, to be able to get DFSZ sensitive down to like 100 kilohertz, so in this difficult to reach uh, region. So this is a next generation detector. So what is the status of these things? Again, um, so Abracadabra and, pa and DM Radio Pathfinder um, are the past of, uh, of DM Radio. So these, this is how we built up some experience doing these things. The current, um, the 50, uh, DM Radio 50 liter is currently under construction. That's what the poster is about in the other room in case you're, you're, you would like more information. And then DM Radio Meter Cubed, again, the design is meant to be completed in 2023. So how do we search for these axions in this mass range? Or in general, how do we search for the QCD axion? Um, through electromagnetism, so there it couples to uh, photons. Um, so the axion field converts to an oscillating electromagnetic signal in the presence of a magnetic field. So we need magnets, um, and we're searching for this, uh, or we're trying to detect this electromagnetic signal. Um, and we detect using a tunable resonator um, to be able to search for axions at different masses. Um, at higher frequencies, we have these cavity-based searches that you've been hearing about and you will continue hearing about, like ADMX and Haystack. And then at lower frequencies, uh, there are lumped element searches because it's not very reasonable to build giant detectors that can cover those, uh, those, mass, or those frequency ranges. And these lumped element detectors are generally, or are like LC resonators instead of cavity resonators. So that's, that's what we are. Um, there are many uh, experiments that are kind of like DM radio that are uh, sub-micro-AV uh, searching. 
So there's abracadabra that I mentioned. There's shaft. Uh, these two are broadband experiments. ADMX slick. Uh, and then, OK, WISP LC you heard about earlier this week. And then here we are, DM radio. Uh, so there are many experiments that are kind of similar, so we're not the only ones trying to do things that other people don't think is possible. OK, so how does our detector look like in a cartoon? We have a solenoidal magnet in a DM radio meter cubed. Um, and then the, the, this is the, these are the fields that we're aiming for. So OK, we have a magnetic field. Um, then axions behave as an AC, effective AC axion current, which generates a, uh, OK. All right, fine. OK, and then we stick a resonator into this magnetic field. So we have this uh, copper coax in the high magnetic field region, and then a superconducting tunable capacitor in the uh, low field region. So this little thing connects them. And then the axion effective AC currents generate magnetic fields that induce currents inside our coaxial uh, inductor or inductive coax. Um, and these screening currents are the ones that flow in our resonator and the ones that we detect with a DC squid. So that's the plan. And here's a picture of uh, preliminary coax design that we've been modeling. So a little bit more detail about the coaxial inductor. Um, so we're planning on making it out of OFHC copper with a high RRR value. Um, the resonator Q, uh, the resonator made up of this coax and the tunable capacitor, is limited by the loss in the no normal copper electrons. So we expect a Q of about 150,000 at 30 megahertz. Um, and then for, we're planning for a, a little series of inductors to span the whole frequency range. So at higher frequencies, we'll have like a shorter inductor. And then at lower frequencies, we have a, lar a longer one. And this is because it's, they're optimized in this way. OK. So here is what our, what our detector looks like. I have the scale on a future slide. Um, so here's the magnet. Um, and then here, there's the dilution refrigerator little squid box uh, shielded from the magnetic field. Um, and then here is where our coax is. So this is like a cross section of our, of our coax here. This, this, uh, this whole thing is our coax. OK, so, uh, so this is the cross section, the little U that's repeated here and here. Um, and this is uh, simulation results. So this is what our DC magnetic field looks like, or the strength of it. So we put our coax over here. This is uh, the height. Um, this axis, uh, axis is uh, the middle of this uh, detector. Um, and so the, right, this, is the, uh, this is the little coax cross section. And then this is the distance away from the center. Um, and then the colors represent the strength of the magnetic field. OK. And uh, here we have the, the AC axion signal. Um, and so we, we can see that some of our or at least part of our coax is, uh, is touching a good, uh, good amount of signal. Of course, we can't, we can't move it further this way because that's where the magnet boundary is. And then this side is, uh, is I guess the, the aspect ratio is chosen such that it's optimized. It's an optimal size to pick up the largest uh, coupled energy. And then, so in this experiment, we'll, we'll be using all like available technologies. One of these technologies that we plan to use are DC squids. Um, and there are, we're, we're planning on having two DC squid channels, one for the science, one for calibration. Um, and there we're avail evaluating various uh, squids from various manufacturers, including homemade, more, more homemade ones um, and commercial ones, such as this one. OK, what does the cryogenic system look like? So we have this magnet cryostat, and the magnet cryostat will be at 4K. Then we have the detector cryostat, which will be at 20 milliK to uh, decrease the noise as much as possible. Um, and then so here we have this cross-section. Um, there's the magnet coils. 
There's the um, bucking coils to decrease the field in this region as much as possible because we want our detector, our coax, to be in the like high B field region. Um, and then this is the neck connecting the the coax to the tunable capacitor in the shielded region and the low field region. We want our squid to be in the low field region, so that's how it looks like. And then the scale um, is about 2.35 meters across and almost four meters high. So it's a large detector. Uh, a little bit more details about the design. Again, all of this will be finalized next year, 2023. Um, but we're, we're making progress towards that, towards that final goal of finishing our design. So there's various thermal shields. There's the magnet. Uh, the copper coax is, again, in this... Uh, this copper colored uh, shape. Uh, then there's the, the, the tunable capacitor, the squid, various, uh, various supports um, that the magnetic field, the magnet, uh, the company that we're going to hire to make our magnetic field, uh, to make our magnet for us have used. So we are, we're already in, in conversation with like various magnet companies to understand what is possible to build and what will work for us, what's optimal. And where are we going to put this large thing? So this will be hosted at SLAC, um, SLAC National Lab. And here's building 750. There's this giant pit. Um, this is like ground level outside giant pit. So we're going to be in this corner here. Um, and what is it going to look like in the future? So there's this corner. DM radio is going to be behind this uh, shielded wall. We'll have an assembly stand and various uh, compressors to cool down our system, our large, large system. So a slide about DM radio gut. This is the next generation experiment um, that uh, we'll do after we, uh, we, under, we, we can develop technologies to make it possible. So the, uh, the goal for DM radio gut is to have, to pretty much optimize all of our parameters. So have a very strong magnetic field, large volume, high quality, high quality factor, low, r lower temperature than a meter cubed, and minimal uh, readout noise. And again, this is like the quantum sensors that we're developing in our other uh, experiment called 50 liter. If you want to read more about it. Here are some references. Um, so finally, again, review. This is what our uh, plan looks like. Um, DM radio is a suite of these lumped element detectors um, for axion masses below one micro EV, um, composed of abracadabra and DM radio pathfinder teams. Then meter cubed specifically um, is an axion detector with DFSD sensitivity from 30 to 200 megahertz. Um, and then the design will be completed in 2023. And DM Radio Gut is this ne next generation experiment um, that will require new technologies. Okay, thank you for listening. Um, and you can go see that poster. Or the other way. Hi, thank you for the talk. Uh, I have a, a question. Uh, can you explain the idea of having two squids, one for science, one for calibration? Yeah, so it's two squid uh, channels, I guess. So, okay, so let's see. One will be used to be taking the data, right? And like, yeah. okay. And then the other one will be used to kind of understand what the noise is in our system. Um, so we can have them like next to each other, for example, and then one will be sampling. Uh, I, I, they'll both be sampling. So I don't know how much in detail you would like. If you would like more detail, we can also talk afterwards. But okay. You can, uh, uh, yeah, you can Thank you. ask. Oh, uh, and another question is uh, on the sensitivity uh, plot. I noticed that all the sensitivity are cut off at the QCD bands. Mm -hmm. uh, is that uh, for design or actually you can go um, deeper than that? Um, right. So it's cut off at the QCD band because we are, our goal is to search for the QCD axion. So it is by design. Um, so we, we 
adjust our parameters to be able to meet these science goals. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the nice talk. Um, is there a simple way that you can help us understand the asymmetric sort of position of um, you know, the signal in your simulation on slide 21? Uh, yeah, slide 21, OK. Uh, asymmetric. On the right-hand side. Over it's, here? Yeah, it's asymmetric not only with respect to the coax, but also the magnet, right? So why? I mean. Yeah, well, OK. Well, so, the, so the magnet come, OK, uh, it'll be from like here. So here's like one boundary of the magnet, and then here's like the other boundary of the magnet. So this is approximately symmetric on the ma on like where the magnet coils are. I guess that if that or were you asking about the magnetic field? Oh 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 yes. What? Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. Axis of rotation. Okay. Okay. Fine. So it's so it's like symmetric in terms of like rotational symmetry, but also um, I guess this doesn't. What is it? This simulation doesn't actually include all the details about the magnet being there. I don't know if that helps understand. So like, there's like magnet coils and stuff that actually affect. Right. You don't include um, sort of the coils and all that. But is is the axis of rotational symmetry on the left edge of these Here, you know, panels? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. thank you. Okay. Stefan, then Sungwoo, or whatever order. Okay, great summary. Thank you. Uh, I have a very silly question. So, you, how, may, how many uh, copper coax loop do you have in your system? How many? Coax. Coaxes? Yeah. Like, how many coaxes are we planning on using for the whole range? No, I mean, since, 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 since simple, yeah. We have there, one there, coax. Yeah, we have one. This is one, uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, is it, or what about putting more coaxes? Anyway, you know, each, each coax will generate a signal and then combine it later. Is it helpful for you? Is it helpful? Right. Yeah. So there's like a balance of like, okay, there's also within one, there's like a balance of how big to make it. So if you make like, I guess many small ones. So like the, there's a balance of like how much flux you're putting through it and then what the inductance of the coax is. And I'm not sure actually if having many coaxes instead of one helps, I imagine that it doesn't. Um, I, I, I don't know if we, I don't know if we've okay. simulated okay. having yeah. multiple tiny ones. Yeah. yeah. There, there could be a very, a very small increase in the couple of energy uh, that would more optimize it better than just two in the, choosing the two coax walls. Uh -huh. In principle, you could gain a little bit by adding a nested series of coaxes, but it's relatively small. Okay, thank you, Ken. So yeah, thanks for the very nice talk. Um, I, I remember the design changed quite a bit from you know what was presented the previous couple of years, um, and you just presented it like so. This is it. Can you um, explain a little bit like um, how you ended up with this design, what the advantages are, and yeah. sort of the electromagnetic properties that led you to choose this particular design? Right. So in terms of, so okay, actually, if you notice, the poster is about uh, 50 liter, and 50 liter uses like a toroidal magnet. Um, and this, so are you asking about that kind of thing? I'm asking about like this coaxial design. Yeah, this coaxial presented. design. Like, how did you end up with yeah, this instead specific of like, resonator design? Yeah, right. So, um, so, well, okay, I want to compare the, so the 50 liter is toroidal and it has this like super connecting sheath uh, and then we have, so we, we can use the sheath, I guess, as like the thing to pick up the signal and then there's the inductor that, that connects to the capacitor. And then here, um, this thing, this coax, kind of, the, the currents are generated there as well. So, okay, there are many things that go into the design. Um, the frequency ranges for this experiment uh, uh, or it is optimal to use uh, solenoid here and this kind of design for these frequency ranges. And uh, what goes into that is uh, like, okay, for other frequency ranges, we use a tordal thing. And then there's like various like parasitic like capacitances and, and stuff that make it not optimal for, for this frequency range. So it's like, 
Does that answer your question? Okay, so it's optimized for the frequency range? Optimized for the frequency okay, range, exactly. This, this design, yeah. Okay, thanks. All right, thank you. Looks like we've got one more burning question, Dottie. Oh, no, you're gonna go, okay, we, we got time for two, just two. Okay. Those are the last two. So uh, maybe you said this and I missed it. Thanks for the great talk. Uh, you're, you're going to have different lengths of coax for the yeah. different frequency ranges. And is the plan to just do multiple cool down cycles or are all of these inside the resonator at the same time or what? what? Multiple cool down cycles, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we change them out. Great. In there. Yeah, so maybe I'm, oh, sorry. Maybe I missed this. Um, are, you, are you tuning? Um, are you running like resonance or broadband? What's resonant? Yeah. Resonant. So right. So we have this coax, um, but then we have a tunable capacitor. Right. And um, then so then how long um, how long do you need to spend um, scanning to achieve the science goals? Um, for so for meter cubed, we're planning five years uh, scan time, yeah, to achieve the science goals that we presented here. Great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Let's move on to our new, next speaker. Thank you. Thank you.